What's up guys and welcome. You are watching Fuzzy Fitness. So let's start this video with the physique update of Good Vito as he starts the next phase of his preparation for this year. So Vito is ready to start this off season in order to make all the improvements and work on all the feedback that was given to him by the judges after Detroit Pro because he needs to have another improvement season so that he closes that gap on size as well as density, especially in his arms and his shoulders the next time he steps on stage. So will he do another show this year and try to qualify for this upcoming Mistro Olympia? Well, as of right now, we do not exactly know. He hasn't announced what his plans are. He hasn't made his intentions clear. But after losing Detroit Pro to Martin Fitzwater, and what we can all agree was a very, very close call. At that time, Vito had all the intentions to do another show, to win a show and qualify for this upcoming Mistro Olympia because he wanted to make his Olympia debut in 2024. So the man has crazy quads. Instant Vito Tipper, especially in that front double biceps. Plus, he has some of the best conditioning out there, especially in the hamstrings and the glutes area. I mean, he was the most shredded guy at the Arm Flossic Brazil. And Tonio Button was actually competing at that show. And that is saying something. Because we all know Tonio has been known for his amazing conditioning. Now, Vito needs to build more than City, especially in his back. In fact, the back was the area where Martin Fitzwater beat him very convincingly. But that being said, I have to say he had made tons of improvements in his back, especially from the time he made his pro debut. That was back in 2022. And if we take a closer look at Detroit Pro results, even though Martin wasn't at his 100%, especially at the pre-judging, but the fact that he still was able to win, that means Good Vito needs to cover some ground. But there is no doubt that he has a great future ahead in the open bodybuilding. And considering his age, the guy is very young. He has all the time in the world. And the fact that the man has already built a world-class physique. So, cannot wait to see him back on the stage again. And let's see if he chooses to compete one more time this year. This upcoming Toronto Pro just got a lot more interesting. We all know John Jewett is always ready weeks out of the show, but this time he got ready a little too early. Originally his plan was to do Vancouver Pro, which is like 7 weeks out, but he has decided to jump into Toronto Pro, which makes him exactly 12 days out of the show. But this physique update was roughly 3 weeks out, and I think this guy is gonna be extremely dangerous, solely on the basis of his ability to make guys in good condition look soft and watery when they are standing next to him. Plus, John is coming in with a lot of extra muscle this time. He had a very nice and very productive offseason this time. He put on a tons of quality muscle. And I am very sure that this is going to be an upgrade version of John than what we saw at Legion Sports last year, which was also his men's open bodybuilding debut. So the way this IFB Pro season has been going on so far, it has been absolutely nuts. And I have to say a number of guys who have yet to earn their Olympia qualification they aren't going to be able to do that. Because as of right now, it seems like there aren't going to be any easier shows up ahead. Every single show from here onwards looks to be stacked. And with the addition of John Dewitt at this year's Toronto Pro, this is going to be an even more exciting show. And I'm hoping all the competitors bring their all-time best, especially in terms of conditioning, so that we can have another amazing show. Nathan Deisha out there in Kuwait is putting out a lot of content. So less than three weeks out of Emperor Classic Spain. And the man is looking absolutely ready. Actually, apologize for that. I think that show he is doing is Italy Pro and not Emperor Classic. So coming back to his update. Even in his last check-ins, where he was posing in that famous doorway, even his hamstrings, especially in that update, they were looking really impressive. Far more impressive than last year. And today, even he himself pointed that out. So we all know his hamstrings is easily his weakest area. And the fact that they are looking better, and we still have roughly three more weeks to go. I think this is probably going to be the best version of Nathan that we have ever seen. So I am so glad that he stuck with Stefan, who is his current coach, even after not getting the desired results, especially in that post-Olympia tour. Because the thing is, we all thought that Nathan Diecia is going to be the one pushing Samson Dauda, especially at Prague, as well as Romania. But the results at both these shows were quite unexpected. Not only did he lose to Samson Dauda and Behros Tabani, but he also got beat by Horsemdi in Romania and Rubil Mosquera at Prague. So this season is going to be a redemption art for Nathan Deisha. Because first of all, he's going to be competing against both these guys. Against Behros Tabani in Italy. And against Rubel Mosquera aka Naxila at the White Pro. And I'm sure he will be looking to take his revenge. He will be looking to make a point here. So talking about Behros Tabani. I think the first show that he is doing, which is Ampro Plus Spain. That is also going to be an amazing one. Because we have so many good names competing at that show. So many different physiques are going to be up there. Everyone with their own strengths and of course with their own weaknesses. Especially the defending champion at Emperor Classic Spain, which is Michael Crystal. And the man is actually looking so big and so shredded at the same time. So 
just on the basis of the placings at last year's Mr. Olympia. I think Michael Crizzo is the favorite going into that show. And yes, I know all these other guys, like Behar Stabani, like William Bonak, like Andrea Presti, they are of course gonna be in the first callout. But taking out a guy like Michael Crystal, that isn't gonna be easy. And first of all, the reason is his humongous size. He's one of the biggest guys out there. Plus, the fact that he has amazing freak factor. And he has to care of his conditioning aspect as well. So all these other guys have already announced what show they are gonna do next. But Michael Crystal, on the other hand, hasn't announced anything. Because if he wins here, I'm sure he will shut the season down and just focus on the Olympia. But what if he is unable to do that? Because at the end of the day, this is bodybuilding we are talking about and anything can happen on the day of the show. So as of right now, he looks absolutely massive. And I think after two years in the pro league, we can really count on Michael Crystal to bring his top-notch conditioning. I think it's safe to say that he is going to be in shape. And by the way, Michael Crystal is another guy who was able to be Nathan Diesha in Prague last year. So there is a lot out there for Nathan Diesha to prove in this upcoming 2024 season because this is going to be his comeback. And after a very long productive offseason, and that too after a very long time. So we know we only have a few years of Nathan Diesha left as a top IFB pro. Even he himself said it last year that he's gonna give himself another two years and he is gonna focus entirely on bodybuilding in both these years. And although he did say that his career could extend up to three years, but after that, that's pretty much it. But all that being said, I am really glad to see him really focus on bodybuilding and giving his 100%. Um, there is no end goal for me, buddy, to be totally honest. Um, I'll be retired in two years. I did never think I'd be a pro bodybuilder. I didn't ever think I would reach as many pro wins as I did. Um, so, you know, for me, I've achieved everything. That's the final goal. And since we are talking about all these upcoming shows, let's not forget the return of Sasan Hirati, aka Sas. He's coming back to the bodybuilding stage after almost six years gap. So this is the man who was placing second behind Nathan Diesha back in 2018. But then he just stepped away from the bodybuilding altogether. He did not compete for a very very long time. So realistically speaking, there is just no way Sazan is gonna look bigger than some of these guys. Because he was never an overly muscular guy to begin with. But he has a nice combination of everything. He had a nice flow. He was always in a top-notch condition. And considering that this is his first show in 6 years, I think he is gonna be really unpredictable here. Because some of these guys, like Michael Crystal, like Behar Stabani, they have had their foot on the gas for all this time. So it is gonna be hard for Sazan to catch up to these guys, especially in terms of size. But I have to say the man is looking really shredded. Still working with his old-time coach Chris Asito. And we all know Chris Asito is that coach who is gonna make sure that he brings his athlete 100% dialed in. So overall, I have to say the Ampro Classics fan, that is gonna be one hell of a show. So do let me know what you guys think, which one of these guys is gonna come out on top. Can anyone actually beat Michael Crystal here? Lastly, I have a classic physique update for you guys. So Patrick Tour, who has just recently started working with Logan Franklin, he has been hyping this guy up a lot. They started working together just a few weeks ago. So let's just hope that Logan actually delivers this time to the best of his ability, especially when it comes to being on the stage. Because the thing is, a lot of the claims that he has made ever since he switched from the men's physique to classic physique, I think it's safe to say that they have been kinda wrong. Because when he first switched to classic physique back in 2020, Logan Franklin himself said that he's gonna bring something similar to the champ Chris Bumstead, but with less flaws. And then he ended up in the ninth place. Plus, I think we can all agree on this fact that the caliber of competition, especially in classic physique, that has gone way up in the last couple of years, that has just skyrocketed. The kind of talent that is emerging in classic physique, that is just nuts. But I have to say, there is a catch for Logan Franklin and Patrick Tour as well here. Because Logan has never been truly shredded. He has never been able to peak 100%. And Patrick can be that guy who can help him achieve that. And for 19 weeks out of this upcoming Mr. Olympia, Logan does look in spectacular condition. But he always stays very lean during the offseason. And we have to keep in mind, he is gonna be competing at least once before this year's Mr. Olympia. So where do you guys see Logan placing at this upcoming Mr. Olympia? Can he crack top 10? Can he place even higher than that? Do let me know in the comments below. And also hit the thumbs up button if you liked the video. And smash the subscribe button if you wanna come back for more. Thanks for watching.